What is going on, gang of lang? We are back with another video, and this time around we are going to be ranking video game mascots, and I will be grading them based on recognition and just how their franchise did overall. Finally, we get back into some gaming content. That I've been craving some of this, like how Joe craves finding a kid all alone in the park. Oh man, you must have really wanted this list then. Gross as always, Joe. But yeah, I'm gonna firstly start off this list by putting all the unknown mascots in their own category. And sure, we could have researched them, but I don't want to. Dude, what the heck? You're placing Frogger in that tier. We clearly know what Frogger is. Well, that's too bad. I'm sure the comments can lecture us on who they are. But anyways, let's get this list started. And up first, we got Rayman. And how do we all feel about this guy? So you're just going to ignore my Frogger comment? Donald, back me up on this. See, with Rayman, it's a slippery slope because he was popping back in the day, and then he was relegated to being a slave for the Raving Rabbids franchise and was basically in that prison for like years, and then out of nowhere got a revival. That being said, I really like the Rayman platformers, and I think it deserves some respect. I'm with you on that, Donald, because I was thinking an A tier for him. And honestly, the same can be said for Fox McCloud, because I am also giving him an A tier. His games have been amazing, and I feel like he has recognized a decent bit, but I won't lie when I say he's being immensely carried by the Smash franchise, keeping him in the modern day loop. But then after we got a guaranteed S tier, and you can hate the Pokemon franchise all you want, but you cannot lie and say it isn't successful, and how it garnered a show and multiple movies all because of this little dude right here. You can show almost anyone a picture of Pikachu, and they'll immediately know who it is. Hell, you can show them damn Digimon, and they'll still think it's something Pikachu or Pokemon related. Oh, but then you have the audacity to say that no one would know who Frogger is. Joe, when was the last Frogger game you played? There hasn't been a modern one, and if there has been, then I haven't heard of it, and it probably flopped. Real ones know about Frogger's adventures. Yeah, I'm sure they do, Joe. Anyways, after that, another A tier in Banjo, and I think he belongs this high for competing in the N64 era and somehow maintaining relevance so long to the point where he got added to Smash like 20 years later. And that has to be impressive to some of you. Then we unfortunately got Knack, and this is a wet fart that goes into D tier, and I don't think I need to comment why. This next one is interesting, though, because it's the mascot to ukulele, and this game was supposed to be a spiritual successor to Banjo and Kazooie, but seeing as though some people don't even recognize this, you can kind of guess how that went. I'll still give it a C tier for the effort they put in. So now we're rewarding effort, huh? Man, this was a very mid game, so I actually do like the C tier placement though. Okay, so why even call me out on that? I don't get you. But anyways, after that, we got two early PlayStation icons, and I am sad to say that I believe neither of them belong in S tier, but I will say that Crash deserves an A tier. Like he just got a new game recently, and there has been somewhat of a revival for the franchise with the remakes and all, but unfortunately, Spyro did not get the same treatment. And although he did get his remakes for the games, he also has been relegated to Skylander's Hell, and many people just know him as the dragon from Skylanders. And that brings a tear to my eye. Oh, that'll bring a tear to your eye, but you won't even give Frogger the time of day. Joe, shut the hell up with your Frogger talk already. We're like halfway done with the list and you're on this BS still. Technically, we're not halfway done. We are actually more so like a quarter or 30% done with the list. Cook that fraud, Joey. I hate you two so much, but uh, anyways, moving on with the list, we got two back-to-back C-tier entries, and that is both Ty the Tasmanian Tiger and Conquer from Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Now, Ty did get a trilogy and even got remasters. And I think a fourth game, actually, but he's still so unknown that I just feel like it wouldn't be right to place him higher. And Conquer had one video game, but I feel like it was iconic enough to earn him this low ranking because there's no way I could have done him dirty and placed him in D tier. The same goes with Sackboy, even though his franchise died down a bit, but you cannot tell me that he wasn't iconic for when PlayStation got hacked and everyone and their mother was playing Little Big Planet on their consoles. And I think he gets a B tier in my book. Yeah, I remember playing the Survive 9-11 survival games that the community would upload. Did you guys do that too? I was more of a survive the bombs type of guy, but I'm sure Barack wouldn't agree with us on those. You'd be right, because I prefer to have more substance and played actual cool created maps. Yeah, you were too busy making the bombing maps to play them. You got him, Donald. You two are such idiots anyways. After that, we got Bubsy, and surprisingly, this guy had a game come out in 2019, but like, he's a D tier, and I don't think anyone is gonna cry about me placing him that low. Now, this next one might have some panties in a bunch, but I'm placing Donkey Kong into B tier, because although he has his own franchise and has a recent entry, 
I just feel like he's an extension of Mario and people don't really recognize him as his own thing. Big L here on that take, considering this man helped create the Mario franchise with the original arcade games, and I am pretty sure a lot of people know who the hell Donkey Kong is. This has to be some sort of hate crime. Joe, you saying this is a hate crime is kind of racist of you. Forgive me for standing up for monkey kind. He's a gorilla, not a monkey. Actually, he's not real, so it doesn't matter. You're so stupid. Anyways, moving on. We got two back-to-back A-tier entries, and my personal bias is definitely taking into effect because Jack isn't really a popping franchise, but hell, I love the hell out of those games, even when they randomly gave him guns. And as for Bomberman, well, he's super well-known and has games coming out to this day, so I have to give him props. So why give Bomberman a low A-tier? It just feels like you of all people would glorify Bomberman. Me of all people? The hell is that supposed to mean? Anyways, I'm giving it an A because the games aren't like amazing and I wanna reserve S tier for my personal favorites. Now this is another one that will make people upset, but I'm gonna place Ratchet into B tier and before anyone says anything, I just wanna say that I loved all of his games and the newest one is an absolute banger. But I just feel like he lacks aura. Like, Ratchet is simply not him, and I don't think people go crazy for it, but I'm sure the comments will probably say otherwise. Then, following that, I got Steve going into S tier. Yeah, you're definitely trolling now if you're placing Minecraft Steve into S tier, but not the other classics. Hear me out. I'm listening. Minecraft is a generational game, and you can hate it all you want, but the fact that it's over 10 years old and just as popular and how the franchise has such a strong fan base just goes to show how elite he is. Like we had Minecraft music parodies left and right, and you can't argue that it has had a huge impact in the gaming space. See, I get your reasoning, I just don't like it. You guys remember the athletic Steve skin that was just a normal Steve, but black and with a chain on? That was kind of cool, so I agree with the S tier. Not really the reason why you should agree with me, but I'll take it. Then after we got Ristar, and I don't think anyone cares about him, so he goes into D tier, then Shovel Knight going into C tier because I feel like he's too new and I haven't heard much Shovel Knight talk. So like, I don't think it's crazy to put him there, but hold the phone because we got two back-to-back S tier entries in Pac-Man and Mega Man. These two are iconic ass franchises and I think their legacy alone gets them that high up. Motherfucker. When was the last Mega Man game even made? Why does he get to ride the coattails of his past successes, but my boy Crash or Raymond don't? Yeah, and Frogger too. Joe, I can guarantee you no one cares about Frogger, and Donald, I just feel like Mega Man is very well known, and he has so many games and even had a show. But yeah, moving on, we got Sly Cooper, and we love Sly here, but the fact that he didn't get any games past the trilogy, aside from the one made by a different company, is what deducts points, but he still gets a B tier. He just isn't that known. And as a fan of the series, I can accept that then Meat Boy gets a C tier because it's a great game, but it's a one-off that is just well known in the indie game sphere. But guys, we got an S tier with Kirby up next because this guy still gets games that bang, mind you, and he has so many collectibles and plushies. Yeah, and all the hot e-girls always have him as their profile picture or just have his merch, and that's how I know I need to love Kirby. Once again, you aren't supporting me for the right reasons, but I'll take it. Then after that, we got the slime from Dragon Quest going into A tier. And this was designed by Toriyama the Goat, so I have to pay my respects. Then we got the Chocobo from Final Fantasy, I think. And while it isn't that known, I still give it a B tier. Then we got Earthworm Jim going into C, and Glover going into D, and you guys can guess why. Because your Willy looks like Earthworm Jim? No, it's because they don't have newer games, and Glover was okay at best. Then as we approach the end of our list, we got two back-to-back S tiers in Mario and Sonic. And honestly, it amazes me that Sonic has such a big lasting power and fame, despite having a lot of bad games. It's crazy because we got furries who love Sonic and never play a single Sonic game. Um, Ask me how I know that. How do you know that, Joe? Because of the copious amounts of furry hentai that I consume. As we heard in the last tier list, thanks for reminding us about that gross fact about you, Joe. Then after we got back to back C tiers and Parappa the Rapper and Cuphead guy. I like Cuphead and I know it has a show, but like who cares about them? I don't even know the dude's name. His name is Cuphead, you imbecile. Yeah, I really don't care because lastly, we got the god of all gaming and that is Gex, which I have going straight into S tier. Finally, a good ranking. I'm most certainly not in the vicinity of Kansas anymore. What? It's a Gex quote, an all time classic. Here's another one. All this technology and Shatner still can't get a good hairpiece. 
Oh man, he's such a funny little lizard guy. Yeah, Joe, I was joking. He goes into D tier because he sucks and his game sucks. Uh...